Hi, my name is Dr. Chimu Wapiwe, and I'll be your lecturer for Sociology of Health, SOC 232. This is an introductory video to the module. First, I'd like to explain what this module is about in simple terms. I'd look at um, what sociology of health is, or medical um, sociology as we like to use them interchangeably. Next, I'll examine key terms and concepts you should know, and then uh, I'll talk about what you should expect from the module. So, I am a medical sociologist, and my research area is grouped broadly, is grouped under uh, health services research. We look at how social factors interplay with health systems to produce outcomes in health. So technically, I look at how, I, I look at those factors that in, prohibit you from accessing health, those factors that, or those barriers that do not allow you, or those health inequities as we would call it. Yes, it's one of the, uh, the um, concepts you would come across in this model. Those factors that, that preclude people from accessing health. We also look at social determinants of health. I also look at health systems and how they work. So these social factors that affect your health and access to healthcare include race or ethnicity, as I like to conceptualize them, income, age, socioeconomic status, some people call it social class, and so much more. Now, did you know that where you were born, that the place in which you were born, live, work, play, and even grow old affect your health? For instance, in the second National Burden of Disease study, the researchers aimed to analyze causes of death data, that's mortality data from 1997 to um, 2012, and developed national population group and provincial estimates of the levels and causes of mortality. They found that cause age standardized death rates were 1.7 times higher in the province with the highest death rate compared to the province with the lowest death rates. They also found that it was 2.2 times higher in black Africans compared to whites and 1.4 times higher in males compared to females. Now, don't worry if this sort of data analysis sounds strange right now. By the end of this model, you will be able to look at data, analyze it, and draw your own independent conclusions. If you want to read the full survey, I have included it in the video links. Patterns of disease and healthcare are very important in order for you to make the right decisions. The skills you learn in this model will help you look at data, make an intelligent analysis, and come to a conclusion that help policymakers make the right laws. Remember, I talked to you about critical thinking and writing skills. Yes, and by the end of this model, you will discover you will be able to hone and build those skills. For instance, Data from Statistics South Africa regarding mortality and causes of death in South Africa in 2016 on number and percentage distribution of deaths by smoking status among those aged 16 years and older indicates that 41.2% of those who died in 2016 were non-smokers compared to 19.5% for smokers. Yes, passive smoking. Does this mean that you should smoke? <laughs> That's a tricky question. If you look closely at the data, you will see that 33.3% of the deaths had no data about their smoking status. Now, as a smart student, what you should do with this data is to analyze, present the facts as you know them, and make recommendations. Or, well, at this point, as an undergraduate student, you're not supposed to make recommendations. So you just um, uh, 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 make suggestions, you know. Well, it's semantics, but recommendations, no. The key thing is your ability to analyze, not your conclusions. Yes, we want to look at how you're able to articulate your, your argument, how, you, how the logical flow, the symmetry in, in, in from how, how you move from point A to point B and your reasoning. So finally, one last example of what sociology of health studies. The same report by Statistics South Africa grouped the causes of death into 19 categories. If you look at the data, you will notice that diseases of the circulatory system constituted the highest cause of death in 2016. What does that tell us? Questions like that are what we will be looking at in this course. I look forward to an exciting time with you in the coming months. Final words, I know that I have a tough lady reputation, but the truth is that I am just passionate about knowledge production and transferring, uh, transferring knowledge and building leaders of tomorrow. 
Come to this course with an open mind, a willingness to explore ideas, and most importantly, leave your excuses and preconceived ideas at the door, and we will get along just fine. Yeah, for how long?